Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Before I even get started talking about the subject of this video, which is Latinxathon, I want to do some very quick housekeeping. Namely, hello to all of my new subscribers! I know how hard it is to hit the subscribe button on a channel that only has a video or two, so I really appreciate it. I also want to give a huge shout out to Olive over at A Book Olive, who was so sweet and tweeted about my first wrap up video upon which I nearly died. So thank you so much. If you don't know Olive, she's an amazing booktuber. She covers all kinds of books, but with an emphasis on nonfiction and books about Russia. Her latest video about unconventional ways to choose your next book is particularly amazing, so go check her out. To the task at hand, today I'm going to be talking about my first a-thon, read-a-thon, yeah. In the United States, Hispanic Heritage Month runs from September 15th to October 15th. I always thought the timing was a little weird, but it turns out there's a good reason. Five Latin American countries declared independence on September 15th, and three more in the week after that, so the timing is actually perfect. The readathon is being hosted by Andrea at Book Ramble, Jocelyn at Yogi with a Book, Priscilla at Bookie Charm, and Yvette at Book Cave, and I'll have all of their info down below. It runs from September 22nd to September 29th. While the only requirement is that you read a book with a Latinx author or main character, there are five challenges to go along with it. The first challenge is voices. Read a book with an Afro-Latinx or indigenous main character or author. The second challenge is pride. Read a book with a queer Latinx main character or author. The third challenge is roots. Read a book with a Latinx author or main character that's been translated or that features more than one language. So for example, if there's Spanish phrases sprinkled throughout the text. The fourth challenge is heritage. Read a book by an author from a non-Spanish speaking Latinx heritage or country. And the last challenge is Latinidad, which is reading the group book Itza by Rios de la Lutz. I love that they chose an independent book. It looks really good. Today I have some recommendations for you so you can get some ideas for your own Latinxathon or maybe the book bingo or just Hispanic Heritage Month in general. I'll be telling you which prompts they cover, so let's go. First is a book that I mentioned in my new to booktube tag video, my very first video because I love it that much, and that is A Simple Story, The Last Malambo by Lila Guerrero, translated by Francis Riddle. In it, Guerrero looks at a dancing competition in Argentina and what drives people to do it when the number one prize is being forced to retire. The writing is beautiful and it clocks in at a mere 120 pages, so quick read, always appreciated during a readathon. The book is translated, so it counts for the roots challenge. Next is a book that I want to see getting so much more attention than it has been and that is Anger is a Gift by Marco Shiro. It is a YA contemporary with an Afro-Latinx main character written by a Latinx author. Oh, and um, the author's also queer and the main character's also queer. So this counts for both pride and voice. And before I start, just some trigger warnings for police brutality and anxiety. Six years ago, Moss's father was murdered by police and that, along with a bunch of media attention, has left him with anxiety, which includes panic attacks. He's a high school sophomore now, and he and his very diverse group of friends, seriously, there's pretty much all the rep within this group of friends, it's amazing, they find that they're being treated like criminals within their own school. Things escalate, things go badly, you get your heart torn out, you get your heart revived, but along with that, and after that, there's the message of hope, and the power of protest and the power of teenagers and women in making change and the power of love. It's a powerful book. If you don't mind some spoilers, Yvette, who is one of the hosts, has a wonderful reading vlog slash review that you should really check out. Next, I have a romance for you. It's Take the Lead by Alexis Daria. Daria is Puerto Rican and the heroine is also Puerto Rican. Our hero is Stone. He has his own reality show in the Alaskan wilderness with his family, the kind of show where they're in the middle of nowhere and they look at, you know, all the family relations and how you survive in the middle of the woods, etc., etc. And Gina is a professional dancer on the reality show. So Stone comes to the show to give his own show a boost 
and they end up getting paired together. One thing I liked about this book is because they're both reality show stars. They both know how Hollywood works and they know that the producers are going to try and trap them into a showmance and that they want to avoid doing that while also slowly falling in love with each other. It's fun. You have some glitz, you have the dancing, you have some forced proximity, there's family secrets, and a bit of crazy. Fun crazy, not too crazy, just fun crazy. And if you read it and end up liking it, there's a second book in the series called Dance With Me, also with a Puerto Rican heroine. And at the end of the second book, there's a hint of a third one that would be a female-female relationship, which I just want, and there's no plans for it yet, as far as I know, but please, 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 Ms. Daria, please. There are some Spanish phrases sprinkled here and there, so you can count this towards the Roots Challenge. And the last book I have for you guys is kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card. It's something, you probably won't read anything like it ever again, and it reads very quickly for reasons you will soon see. So even though it wasn't my favorite book, I'm glad that I read it, and who knows, it may be just the thing for you. And that is The Subsidiary by Matias Celedon, translated by Samuel Ritter. Our protagonist is an employee at a subsidiary for a very large Latin American company. All of a sudden, the power goes out, and over the loudspeaker, they're told that not to move from their desks until further notice. And he only has the stuff at his desk, which is several rubber stamp sets and a couple other office supply type things. And he uses those to tell the story. So like you can see on the cover, there's stamp block that you can, movable text that you can put on there. And that's how the story is told. I thought it was an innovative way to construct a narrative. And because there's only a sentence, maybe two on each page, you can flip through it quite quickly. Now, it wasn't exactly my cup of tea. The ending left me unsatisfied. I felt that he could go so many more and deeper places, even with this constrained set of rules, kind of, that he placed on himself, the author did. But I'm still glad I read it. It's innovative. So if you have some spare moments, or there's only a few hours left in the readathon, and you want to try and get one more book in, this is an option for you. So there we have it, my recommendations for Latinxathon. Have you read any of these books? Are you adding any of them to your TBR? Also, let me know what you're planning to read for the Latinxathon. I'm putting my TBR together right now, and while I have a pretty good list, I'm always on the look out for new books, so let me know down below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like what you see, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!